What's going on everybody, it's ETA Prime back here again. Today we're going to be taking a look at Steam OS 3, otherwise known as Steam Deck OS, running on the Aya Neo 2. Now if you're not familiar with this device, I have created a couple videos, I'll leave a link in the description. But basically what we have here is a Ryzen 7 6800U powered handheld with a beautiful 7 inch IPS display. Now uh, this is running at 1920 by 1200 and uh, it definitely looks a lot better than most of the other IPSs that we've tested. It actually is really close to an OLED. And as you can see, we have a bezel-less design here. Now, real quick, going into the settings here, as you can see, we're on SteamOS 3. This is actually Hollow ISO. The team over there has taken the Steam Deck recovery image and reworked it so it works on other devices. But with this, we've got the Ryzen 7 6800U and 16 gigabytes of LP DDR5 RAM running at 6400 megahertz. I haven't installed this operating system on the internal drive because I'm still running Windows on it. I'm actually just going to be running this from an external SSD so it's really easy just to plug in and I can actually transfer this over to other computers and test it from there. Now I do want to mention that, you know, this operating system was never intended to be run on the Aya Neo 2, and uh, I'm kind of doing this at my own risk here. Everything's working except for kind of a hotkey to bring up the on-screen Steam Deck performance menu, because in SteamOS 3 there's no way to map that button, and on the Aya Neo 2 we don't have a Steam button or an Xbox button to bring it up, but we can tap on that battery icon, and we can set up the performance menu, we can use system-wide FSR, the only thing that's not working from that menu is TDP control, at least from the stock menu that we use with the Steam Deck. But luckily, there are some third-party developers out there who've come up with some really awesome stuff, like HandyPT, otherwise known as Handy Power Tools, and basically what this allows us to do is adjust the APU settings on other devices besides the Steam Deck. We've got TDP control from 5 watts up to 35. We can also turn off CPU boosting and multi-threading. And uh, for this video, we're going to be testing a lot of the stuff at 15 watts. I really want to see how it compares to the Steam Deck at 15 watts. But remember, we can get much better performance out of this device by upping that TDP. The 6800U does love a little extra power over the Steam Deck's APU. I mean, that was a custom APU designed specifically for the Steam Deck, where power constraints were definitely in mind when making it. And the first thing I wanted to take a look at was just total system power consumption. And we're going to start here with the Steam Deck itself. We've got Spider-Man Remastered, and with all of these AAA games, I've noticed that total system power consumption from the battery on the Steam Deck is around 25 to 28 watts. It does fluctuate right in between there. As you can see, it's right around 26 to 27, and I'm just using the stock Steam Deck preset. Now this has a 45 watt hour battery, and while we're pulling that much wattage from the battery, basic math tells us that we can get around 80 to 90 minutes of battery life out of it at around 26 watts. Remember, what we're looking at right now is not just the CPU's TDP, this is total system power consumption, that's including everything on the Steam Deck. Now moving over to the Aya Neo 2, I wanted to show you that we're at that 15 watt TDP on the CPU and total system power consumption on the Aya Neo 2 running Spider-Man Remastered with the same settings, we're pulling around 32 to 33 watts on the Aya Neo 2. Now the main thing here is we've got four extra cores that we need to power and when it comes to the 680M iGPU that we have here with the 6800U, it does require a little more wattage to get up there to those clocks. But even at 15 watts, this is offering better performance than the Steam Deck. And of course, we've got more to go with it. We can actually take that TDP up. And really, when it comes down to it, a lot of these manufacturers with the 6800U handhelds are calling 28 watts gaming mode. Of course, our battery is going to die much faster, but the Aya Neo 2's battery is a bit bigger, coming in at 50.25 watt hours. So really, when we're looking at both of these devices, around 80 to 90 minutes of runtime at 15 watts. Now the next thing I wanted to take a look at was Cyberpunk 2077 on the Aya Neo 2. We're using the Steam Deck preset, and I've actually gone up to 20 watts on the TDP. That's really going to help get those clocks on the CPU and GPU up there. And uh, instead of running at around 35 FPS, we're really close to 60, and we can stretch 60 out of this. We will need to take some of those medium settings down and go up to about 23 watts on the TDP. But yeah, I mean, we could run this at 60 if we wanted to. Next on the list, we've got The Witcher 3, and this is one that performs really well on APUs. With this, instead of running it at 800p, we can actually take it up to 1200p, and we've got a low-medium mix. 
The TDP is set at 23 watts, and we've got V-Sync or frame cap off on this game, so turning that back on will allow us to get a little better battery life out of it. Right now, with V-Sync off, it just kind of has to go over that threshold and pull a little more from the CPU and GPU to get over 60 FPS. Taking a look at Sonic Frontiers, we're at 1200p, high settings, but in order to get 60 out of it, I did have to turn the resolution scale down to 50%. I really hope they do some optimizations for Linux and Proton with this game, because it does run pretty well, but we always have to take that resolution scale down. Here's Doom Eternal, and this one just works really well in Linux. We're at 1200p medium settings, and we can get well over 60 FPS out of it. Again, V-Sync is off, so we could limit that power by a bit turning V-Sync on, and it would play this at 60 all day long. I really wish we would have saw more games using this engine here, because uh, even on these APUs in Windows or Linux, it just performs really well. I also wanted to throw a fighting game in here, so we've got Injustice 2, 1200p medium settings, and I'm not exactly sure why this isn't Steam Deck verified, I guess it's just an older game and not a lot of people are buying it, but even on the Steam Deck with lower settings, this works out really well at 800p. I personally think it should be Steam Deck verified, but as you can see, constant 60 here at 1200p medium settings. Now what we've seen so far were harder to run games. I did want to show off just a couple easier to run games. They're not going to pull as much wattage, like uh, Sonic Mania here. I actually expected this to pull a little less, but uh, you know, with those extra four cores there, I guess it's just working them. I could disable overboost here, and we could definitely save a little power, but I just left it on. And finally, Left 4 Dead 2, 1200p, maxed out, 60 FPS. Really great performance, but yeah, I mean, it's an older game. This even runs on lower-end Intel CPUs at a lower resolution, so I expected this to run really well. But the older source-based games are going to be fully playable maxed out at 1200p on this device. So overall, yeah, we're actually hitting really great performance at a Steam OS 3 on the INEO 2, but uh, you know, it was never meant to be run on this. There's no optimizations with this operating system specifically for this handheld here or the chipset it's using, and it can still do a really great job. Aya does have their own Aya OS coming out, and I really hope I can get my hands on an early copy to take a look at it. It does look great. It's based on Linux. We're going to have a really nice little game launching interface, and all of the optimizations we need for their handhelds will be implemented with that operating system. But until that releases, I think I'm going to be sticking with Windows 11 just due to all of the optimizations for the 6800U and those Radeon drivers. Now don't get me wrong, running Arch on the 6800U is great, but we're working with a handheld gaming PC that just needs a little extra, like full TDP control, and we have that with Aya Space in Windows right now. And it also offers full RGB control for the RGB LEDs around the analog sticks. But yeah, I mean, if you did want to check out SteamOS on this device, it's totally possible to run it. It does work pretty well. And I'm sure once iOS is released, we're going to see even better performance from Linux out of this 6800U device. But that's going to wrap it up for this one. I've had a bunch of people asking about testing out SteamOS 3, otherwise known as Steam Deck OS, or Hello ISO on the Aya Neo 2. And yeah, it can be installed, it can be run. If you have any questions, let me know in the comments below. And like always, thanks for watching.